This is Twit. We're here to talk about the Zach and Kelly Wintersmith book, A City on Mars, which is a somewhat comprehensive and slightly tongue-in-cheek look at space settlement. And specifically, they went into this book, as they say, as if not advocates, at least enthusiasts about the idea of humans moving off Earth and settling the solar system and possibly beyond. But that's not what the final book turned out to be. And uh, a mea culpa up front, I'm listed in the text as an advisor, as are a couple of other people who are space settlement advocates. And uh, the conversation I had with them was fairly early on, and I gave them the best pointers I could primarily in the role of author of Space 2.0, a book I put out a couple of years ago. Um, and I won't say that they turned it against me or anything. It just wasn't what I expected to come out of that interview or that series of interviews. So what are you going to do? Um, they, they write it as they see it, and it's a different view. As they put it, Authors Zach and Kelly Wienersmith set out to write the essential guide to a glorious future of space settlements, but after years of research, they aren't so sure it's a good idea. They claim we lack the knowledge needed to have kids in space, build space farms, and create space nations in a way that doesn't spark conflict back home. Can you make babies in space? Should corporations govern space settlements? What about space war? Are we headed for a housing crisis on the moon? Why do astronauts love taco sauce? I don't know about that last one. Well, actually, we, we do know about that last one because they can't taste anything. And their final uh, sting, speaking of meals, what's the legal status of cannibalism in space? So um, there we go. Dale, what's your what's your sweeping overall take on this uh, this volume now that I've set it up for you a little well, bit? Well, like, I, as I said in my, uh, I wrote a 40,000 word review of, of yes. a response to this book. Uh, that, that's, that's my claim to fame. And here. a good review, and, a very good review. Well, actually, I wrote a short review for the, the, the No City on Mars that appears in, at Astra, which, and then I wrote a much, much longer review, 40,000 mm -hmm. words, which is basically a third of a book. Are you uh, serious with 40,000 words? I thought you were being glib. No, that's, that is not an exaggeration. It's wow. 40,000 words. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it's, it's like, it's not quite book length, but it's, uh, oh, no. it's a serious thing to read it, you know? Um, and I, I think that, look, I was expecting that the thing that you need to know is they, we had in fall of 2021, we had this uh, workshop, space on workshop to, re-envision O'Neill's future. And uh, they attended, we invited them, we're delighted to have them there. They announced they were doing a book, or at least Kelly, uh, Kelly was there, or, and she announced she's doing a book, and we applauded. She mentions it in the book that we applauded her. And I was there, I was applauding, you know? And and the reason I was applauding is that, look, they, this promised to be like the first serious book on space settlement in like, generations because if, if you if you ask yourself when was the last sort of popular book advocating for space settlement i'd have to say colonies of space by heppenheimer that's oh, that's the last that? one <laughs> it was i should have it in front of me but and that was about the same time as high frontier came out it's certainly of that epoch and heppenheimer was one of o'neill's associates and colleagues so it's been a long, long time. There have been a lot of books by uh, our good friend um, Zubrin on Mars, but there are not very many books on free space settlement, especially serious books. I mean, obviously, that not a chapter or a few words. Oh, yeah, there was this guy O'Neill somewhere hanging gardens in the space settlement, but an actual serious book advocating. So when I saw when I read the book, I was really disappointed because it's basically you know, 50,000 gallons of FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt about space settlement. And, but, but it's, it is humorous FUD. And a lot of it is, I, I have to say, irrelevant. Um, having, you know, thousands of words about how radiation is bad for you is, is not really all that interesting. We know radiation is bad for you. We don't need to see thousands of words about how microgravity is bad for you, zero gravity is bad for you, and so on. Um, the question is, what are, what are, what, why do space settlement advocates think there's a solution and what is it and is there some problem with that? And in that sense, they, I think they didn't go into it as deeply as they could and they actually missed some anti-arguments that I can think of. So, uh, but, but the bottom line is, this was a serious book 
it, it has a lot of depth, even though there's a lot of pointless humor and, and even, I think, some mean-spirited jokes about Herman Ober that I didn't appreciate. Um, it, it, it's, it's got a lot of thought, and they raise a lot of issues. You might say it may not be, it is the most comprehensive anti-space settlement book. And because of that, it's very useful if you're a space out of an advocate because you can look at it and say, well, you know, do I have an answer to this? Do I have an answer to that? Does this make any sense? And so in that sense, it's part of the dialogue of ideas. And that's why I wrote the 40,000 word response, which is currently being peer reviewed to appear in the NSS Space Settlement uh, Journal as an essay. It's not a journal article. It's very personal. It's Rod knows. I tend to do, I tend to write like I talk, just like I'm talking to somebody. And it's not a, a journal style, you know, it's, it's, hopefully it's more fun. Anyway, I don't know. Uh, what next, Rod? Well, so just a note, Heppenheimer's book was written or published in 1977. So certainly things have changed since then. And I would add, you know, that it's possible to write a populist tongue in cheek space book, uh, I mean, I like to think a couple of mine are, but witness a bigger success than mine packing for Mars by Mary Roach. I mean, that was extremely popular and it was very snarky. I mean, there were even fart jokes and things in there, but it was still well researched. And I think the points held up to scrutiny for the most part. So, um, yeah, this one felt to me, I, I don't want to mischaracterize it, but just a little flabbier around the edges in terms of, uh, of how they went after it. Isaac. I liked some of the artwork that was in there. I actually had mentioned that in the upcoming episode on the cities of Mars, um, and I thought the biology was probably one of the stronger points. There's bits being discussed there that you know, for a lot of us who are rocket enthusiasts or engineering enthusiasts, you know, we tend to overlook how difficult it is to make soil, how, how hard it is to actually propagate any kind of even a very shallow ecosystem in an environment like that. So they were raising good points in the book in many cases. There, there are some, I agree, that were overdone or not really relevant. But of me, the points were valid. It's just that they were looking from the, well, this is a problem. We don't know how to fix it at this exact moment, or we have many possible solutions that have been field tested, so therefore we can't do it. And that's, that's kind of like saying we'd like to build ourselves a big cathedral or a big skyscraper, and we don't have every last point ticked down for sure yet, so let's not even try. And I think that was kind of the weakness of the book is that it is, it's very pessimistic. And I mean, I'm known for my techno optimism on space, so maybe I go the other direction. But uh, overall, there's a lot to like about the book, but there's a lot more to dislike in terms of its advocacy on, on basically being against space, which is unfortunate. I, I think we should say something about the art. So the, the, the viewer, the listener is warned, is that uh, Kelly Wiener Smith is, is a PhD biologist and she does research in parasitic worms. So it shouldn't be surprising that the biological parts of the book tend to be the strongest parts of the book. I agree with Isaac on that. And, and I'm not even, I don't even think they're that far from what I think. I, and I say that in my review, I mean, I think it, the re, you know, there's a lot of thoughts there that make a lot of sense and, and a lot of common ground. Um, but her husband, uh, Zach Wienersmith, is a cartoonist. Uh, so I wouldn't want you to see, expect to see McCall style art there. This is cartoon art. It's funny. I think mo I find it entertaining. And I, I like, you know, Zach Wienersmith as a, a humorous artist. It definitely adds something to it. But this is not like a, this is a book that's intended to be snarky. It's intended to be popular. It's intended, intended to be funny. And for the most part, it's entertaining. So, you know, I read the whole thing and, even if, you know, if you read the book, that's good, right? There's a lot of books that you, you start out and after 30 pages, you stop. And this one, I, I did read the whole book. Hey, if you enjoyed this clip, be sure to check out This Week in Space. You can find us on your favorite podcast app or see the link in the description below. See you there.